The first time I said, I think I got bears in my corn, one of the biologists said, I don't think so. He says, I think it's raccoons. He says, you know, they do a lot of damage in cornfields. And he said, corn isn't a natural food for bears. And, and I'm sure it probably isn't. But uh, anyhow, I showed him the big pile of left behind from eating too much corn. And I said, that took a mighty big raccoon to do that. In 2016, people and carnivores worked with landowners, as well as federal, state, and tribal agencies to minimize crop losses to grizzly bears in the Mission Valley. We tested a new type of electric fence at Shock's Mission View Dairy, one that can be built at a relatively low cost around large crop fields. We raise about 100 acres of corn silage a year for the dairy cows. And so the corn has been a real important part of our diet for the cows because we're so far from buying from the Midwest that the freight is just unavailable as far as the cost and everything. Millie's Woods is behind me. It's one of the largest concentrations of grizzly bears in the lower 48 states. The bears have been more comfortable with people around because we moved into their territory. And so once they get down here and find out that there's a lot more to eat and a lot easier to find it, it seems like they've stayed. There were bear trails that looked like highways coming into and out of this corn. So you had bears coming in here every night, leaving in the morning, and then you had some bears, especially big males, that never left. They figured we had 20% of our corn was knocked down from the bears. 20% on 100 acres, that's 20 acres. You know, that's an eight or $10,000 loss a lot of years. You know, every year from mid-August on, grizzly bears have been coming into the corn and it's really hard to get them out of it and then they'll stay until it's gone. It's a learned behavior, corn's a learned behavior. So for the last 16 years, we've been producing grizzly bears that eat corn. We figured we had about 14 around. We had two different sows that we saw and each of them had two cubs, so that made six right there. And the neighbors to the south of the cornfield, they used to sit out on their deck and they'd say they could count eight or 10 at night just wandering around at the edge of the cornfield. And she wanted to know what was the difference this year. She hadn't seen any. And I said, well, we'd put up the electric fence. We constructed two miles of electric fence at Shock's Dairy based on an experimental design that had proved promising in tests. This was the fence's first large-scale application. The short fences came from a Michigan study that showed that this design of three-wire electric fence was 100% effective at keeping black bears out of a bee yard. So we took that spacing and we raised each of the wires an inch to account for grizzly bear size. So that short fence is 24 inches, 16 inches, and 10 inches. Those are the wire spacings. To have a, an entire cornfield such as this with the huge food incentive was really great. If we can find a solution to keep grizzly bears out of that cornfield, the landowner can sleep at night easily knowing that bears aren't ruining his future and the grizzlies can go back to finding their natural food sources. Oh, I think it's made a huge difference. Probably saved at least 10 or 15% more corn that we were able to harvest than we did last year. And the damage you can see is a lot less. I think they're a credible animal. They're very interesting to watch. And I think that we need to protect them and, and everything. We don't want them on a hunting list or anything. But I think we as, a, as an area or as, as people, we need to all share in some of the cost and some of the things that are associated with protecting them. What I would tell landowners living around grizzly bears is that it doesn't have to be one way or the other. It doesn't have to be you or the bear. There's plenty of ways to live in coexistence with these animals and there are very simple solutions. They may take a little work at the onset, but they're well worth it down the road. While the fence diminished crop loss by 75% and dropped the number of bears accessing the field from 16 to 4, we still have room for improvement. In the coming years, we will continue to refine and test this design. Our hope is to use the fence, which can be built quickly and economically, to minimize conflicts with grizzly bears throughout the region. For more information or to learn more about our work, visit peopleandcarnivores.org.